Good morning, good morning. Well, at least at the time of filming. There is always this moment in the morning where it's a state of limbo between myself and the orchids waiting for the outdoor and indoor temperatures to match before these guys can go outside. We have just found ourselves in a 36 hour stint of being indoors and I am eager to get them outside because it's sunny again. Thankfully we got ourselves a little rain but I thought I would take this opportunity and show you what it looks like indoors without the lights on because these are the conditions, the reality of the orchids when they're inside seeing as I do not supplement with my lights anymore and it is a little bit chilly in here as well maybe you can hear it in my voice I'm a teeny tiny bit congested I hope it doesn't put anybody off if you're hearing the pitter patter of feet that is king having a field trip with the birdies because yes I've got birdies in here they've already visited Cilianum but they are waiting for the door to open as well and they are a little bit slow in understanding they can go out the living room door <laughs> but they've gotten accustomed to waiting for the main door to open but anyway let me just switch a light on for this occasion because I want to show you some blooms so you see the left side, those are my smaller pots. They all fit quite well there. The orchids that are still outside are the Ancelia Africanas, the Perparatas, and two large pots that I can't bring indoors, the Oncidium and the CG Roebling. And these are the pots, the size of the pots where the CG Roebling is in and I'm not bringing her in, seeing as her reputation is a little sus at the moment. Now let me just turn the camera over to the blooms and see if we can actually see them. Maybe the camera is going to help and get a little bit close up, but not before I give you a look at the angrecoids. The buds are forming beautifully. And that water tray, yes, that is brown because that has a product in it called TNC Mycohydro. Beneficials, beneficials, bacteria and fungi for hydroponics. And well, I'm giving everything a go, testing it in many, many different varieties. It is staining my velamen, but the roots are absorbing and that is the most important thing. And I think we are going to see some angrecoid blooms touch wood and that is why I wait for temperatures to match indoor and outdoors because I have things in bud and I don't want to risk bud blast. This is my amazing after dark black pearl. I cannot tell you how gorgeous this space smells. Very very cinnamony with a lot of spicy ginger in the air and a hint of sugar. In the mornings it's more medicinal which is really good. If I inhale enough maybe it'll clear my sinuses. <laughs> But this is the true color that I'm seeing right now. She is truly very black. This is not shadows being cast or the light going wrong. This is her appearance. I don't have to mess around. If I were to put her in the sun, she comes out a little bit more of a deep burgundy. But as real as it can get when we look for the colors in the blooms, transmitting them over the camera, this is it. It is beautiful. <laughs> Now, let me move you up a teeny tiny bit because I just want to talk to you about my Phalaenopsis orchids. On the top shelf, back in the day, they used to benefit from the blurple light, so they are kind of in perpetual darkness, so I only have two spikes forming on them. One of them happily is the Shiliriana, and one of them is Babalicious. Baba also has a spike that I can see coming, but we're not going to see very many blooms from my fowls, seeing as they don't get much light. I will enjoy the fragrance of Aurora 4.0 though, because she has a spike. The mini fowls at the bottom, they are not in spike at all. And this is my winter blooming alley. We'll get a little bit closer because I'm so proud to say that I've got pastoral innocence blooming for the first time. Seeing as I can't do much shuffling around the shelves, as you can tell, it's a tight squeeze. <laughs> I shall be inserting images for your viewing pleasure. It is incredible how long my Dendrobium naphets Alex Poli is in spike. This is the first spike that bloomed out very early in the season, which was surprising to me, but still in fabulous bloom, doesn't appear to be going over at all, while the other spikes are starting to open. So we've got some older blooms here giving off sort of a beige greenish kind of chartreuse color, 
and in the back we've got the cleaner the more younger blooms that are a little bit more of a chartreuse we don't have that much yellow it is not exactly representative on the camera but my goodness as all these spikes open again tight squeeze but it's a beautiful one and i love it in competition with my after dark black pearl when it comes to fragrances is my darinara blue charm oh wow i have to say that this spike is holding on beautifully i don't see any blooms dropping maybe it is because of the colder temperatures it is holding on so well but my my goodness van der falcata fragrance during the month of january who would have thought the spicy ginger now mixed with a sugar lemon that is pretty amazing and i forgot to mention actually sorry my pastoral innocence smells of very fresh lemon powder sugar not very intense i believe that orchid would require a lot more light and warmth in order to push the fragrance out more intensely but seeing as in her ancestry we've got rincolalia digbiana yeah you can tell that fragrance comes from the digbiana it's gorgeous and as i love my digbiana <laughs> i'm very pleased with my pastoral innocence it's gonna get even a little harder to show you some more blooms but we're gonna give it a go the lighting is absolutely terrible but you can see my fushu glory happy holiday there's the two blooms that we were waiting for it's already bloomed on another growth two prior they are over and done with so these are opening up painfully slow conditions related but my goodness i am so glad at least there wasn't any bud blast because these are right in the alley between where the door opens and well if buds are forming in this space then it's always very very risky but for the snoop cam of my orchid ninjas i like to have all the blooms really clustered up here because this is pretty much the angle that they see from the other side so i'm trying to get the blooms to show up on the camera despite of what else is going on on in the background if you would like to become an orchid ninja please join the channel memberships and then you can also can get access to the snoop cam and you can watch the wildlife including the two-legged ones <laughs> not just the birds and the dogs and me going about my orchid business on the daily when it is possible to actually put the snoop cam on so now you can see the happy holiday blooms. Now that the blooms have opened, I can turn the orchid around and face her towards the snoop cam. The intention being not to move the orchid while the blooms are opening so that they open somewhat straight and facing in the right direction. And let me see how this is going to work because I have the Gold Coast right here also in bloom. I can't tell from this angle if that is even in focus this spike is well taking forever to open but she is a warm to hot grower so the conditions she is not appreciating them at all and these blooms i mean these buds have been like this for the past i would say two weeks so i doubt that they will open maybe we'll be lucky but i doubt it very much still it's nice to have a little touch of color here and then if I pan you over very slowly, you'll see my very yellow leaves of the Digbiana, but that's okay because she goes outside and she is in full winter sun. Don't like how cold the leaves are at the moment, but the beauty is, and I hope we're going to see some blooms because she has a sheath growing in one of her new growths. There's another growth tucked away on the second lead over there. It is always a little bit behind. I doubt we're going to see blooms on that one. It's a bit too cold. But as I always say with my orchids this time of year, just hold on, just hold on. We've got January now at the time of filming, so February, March. We've got at least nine weeks to go, and I'm just, well, I can't hold my breath, but, you know, I'm holding my breath, doing the best we can. Okay, and then here... Look at my little twinkle red fantasy coming out of her snow white slumber of almost being lost and her spike has opened up. Now I have a very, very heavy sugar vanilla as well competing with all the other orchids that are fragrant in this space. Really nice to see these blooms back, scale free. And we have another spike growing over here. So this is going to be super interesting. 
I wouldn't exactly consider her rescued, but yes, I'm letting her bloom out because Michael McCarthy reminded me that's how long I've been fighting to get this orchid back to some form of representative growth. But Michael McCarthy reminded me that if I cut the spikes too soon, the twinkle will start growing new growth, which will make it even more complicated to protect the growth from rotting out because, <laughs> you know, cold temperature, winter and water, not a good combination. So I'm letting her bloom. The pseudobulbs are beautiful and plump and well, another spike is on the way. So hey, hey twinkle is back for the time being when I'm really hoping that it is a permanent feature now. This is a bit of an awkward angle but I'm just going to give you the idea of what's going on here. All the pots on the top there they have to go outside to the west shelf where I'm waiting for the sun to come <laughs> and hit that area and then everybody down here also needs to go outside. My Jomelia borescens. Oh my Ascocentrum apoyathea is in spike not fully showing spikes but I can see that they are starting and then down here these two large pots also they don't move I have to sort of reach over them so I don't disturb them the Sologeny pandorata here is already growing a new growth which is like oh not so good not the right time still too cold I think that growth is going to fail because it's right up against the pot of the latest big bulb that you see there it is really quetched up against it so I'm very concerned and I put her down here because at least she gets a little bit more light I cannot intervene with the Sologeny at all just yet a too cold b no new roots growing there's a few spikes on my Dendrobium antenatum, surprisingly enough. Never had this happen in January before. Oh my goodness, what a treat for this time of year. She's already starting new growths, but tentatively and understandably so. Who would want to put any extremities out in these temperatures? And they're going to get worse. I am expecting single digit nights now, back to back to back. So it's button down the hatches, hunker down and just ride it out. You see, I've got a towel here just so that the air doesn't come in right through the terrace slot right here from the sliding door there's a big gap so I quetch a towel in there yes my windows are dirty that is for a reason because the Sun blasts in through this glass and instead of pulling a sheer curtain back and forth as you can see everything is just a tight squeeze I make sure that the windows stay dirty and that is my excuse for not washing windows and I'm grateful my orchids provide me with that very plausible reason <laughs> this is my little potinara golden orange golden boy from Fernanda Nacimiento orchids and succulents <laughs> I would say this is her second blooming Within two months, the first bloom that we had made her a first time bloomer. The next new growth matured. Now we've got two blooms. She's doing very, very well. I'm so pleased. Got another new growth coming here, but it's not going to be a blooming growth, which is fine. At least we're going to get roots. And there's another growth coming out the other side back here as well. So this orchid is uh, rocking and rolling. She be ballin', so to speak. But anyway, let me make sure I don't mess up my Kaularthrum barconutum. But isn't that just adorable? This pop of bright orange. I'm so pleased. I am so pleased because it is kind of difficult to get these warm growers through the winter in Lekka and self-watering. And yet here we are. We've got blooms. They're not exactly fragrant unless you say it's a very plastic fragrance. If that is a fragrance, then that's what she smells like. Plastic. <laughs> And right on the bottom shelf, I have the talcum powder fragrance of my Prostechia Garciana Alba that has been blooming since she had to come indoors in November. This is her place down here. She doesn't move. Before I forget, tucked right underneath the shelf is my Dendrobium Roy Tokanaga that is also coming into bud, taking forever for the buds to open, which is normal for the Roy Tokanaga. And then I've got finally Dendrobium Pocket Lover busting some moves with lots and lots of nubbins, which I hope will transform into beautiful little white blooms that also smell of lemon. 
This orchid was gifted to me by Kateva Orhide. She had some issues as she was trying to acclimate into my climate. Well, it seems we have overcome those issues because I have never seen her bust that many nubbins out from a single cane. And that is not the only cane. <laughs> And then a spike that I didn't show you, but it is there, is my Zygolpedalum trozy blue. This is the second spike on the same growth that previously wanted to bloom, but Ratatouille took out the buds and only left us with one bloom. So the growth said, hold my beer. I'm just going to throw out another spike and it is doing beautifully so far. So there's plenty of things to come. I would appreciate it if you would give this video a like and if you would like to subscribe to the channel, I would so welcome you to the fold. <laughs> so much to see, so much to do. In the meantime, my coffee got cold because as you do, you know, you get carried away when it's orchid. So I'm just going to say good morning to you once again. And I'm going to say thank you so, so much for watching. I'm going to wish you a beautiful day on that one condition though please that you stay safe take care bye